Eiffel. London, 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 London. Eiffel. This is Coogan Cassis for IFM London. We're at my gym here in Finchley. With me, I've got trainer to Derek Chisora, Don Charles. How are you, Don? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Uh, yeah, a few, a few problems on the go, Don, but, you know, what can you do? Is there any problem that I can't fix? I don't know what you can do, Don, so... I can do it in the mix. You know the rest. <laughs> I know the rest. I know the rest. Listen, thanks for asking. Um, obviously, um, fight night's approaching very quickly, um, six days away. Um, Derek's looking in fantastic shape. Obviously, you know, since Tyson Fury fight, every fight that he has been fighting, he's been looking better and better. Yeah, so you know, it was, um, it was you know, in life you make mistakes. We made mistake um, from the Tyson Fury fight. We've learned from. I've le certainly as a coach, I've learned from it. Um, and as, if I can help it, and I will help it, it won't happen again in my coaching career. What sort of mood is Derek in? Obviously, Derek, very unpredictable. We don't know, you know how he's going to be every time. Thank you, Francis. Every time, we don't know what sort of mood Derek's going to be in when he, t when he turns up to his media days. He seems in high spirits today. Um, you know, is that generally how it's been the last few days? And Derek, even when Derek's not fighting, that's, how, that's his makeup. Yeah, he's a moody character. Um, he's a very special person in the sense that he's a genius. In one hand, he may appear to the general public because they don't really know him, like he's a bit off-key. That's how he appears, but there's a genius living in there somewhere. Um, can you just clarify a little bit about what happened in this bust-up uh, regarding you and Derek and yeah. you apparently it's training him? And it's no secret, yeah, it's no secret. Listen, you know, it's not something me and him are proud of. It, it's been consistent all through my time with Derek from the beginning to now. And I don't believe it'll be the last time. Yeah, um, we're ve I'm very, uh, I'm very stubborn person. Yeah, so is he. Okay, um, I'm like a father to him. I'm old enough to be his father. So therefore, where I come from, my upbringing is that he also comes has similar background to me. We're both Africans originally. We're we're based in the UK. We like living here. It gives us an opportunity to make something of our lives. So we always appreciate every day of the week. But you mustn't lose those fundamentals of your upbringing. The, 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 it's called manners. So therefore, it's my duty as his elder to remind him when he steps out of line. If it means getting physical, physical it gets. Right? It's not nice. I've got a 20-year-old son. Okay? He was rude to his mother about... In fact, when he was 18 was the last time I got physical with my son. Yeah, he was rude to his mother. She cooked him dinner. He said, I don't like this nonsense you just cooked for me, which is really rude. He picked it up and threw it away. She called me, I raced around there, and I dealt with it. That's the upbringing I had, and that's who makes me the person I am today. Those, what my parents put into me, those, those skills, yeah, skills of life. Without them, you're not gonna go far. So when Chizora, gets how he gets, I have to, somebody has to pull him into check. And that's, when that happens, it's purely me. And he appreciates it, believe it or not. Not at the time when it's happening. <laughs> that's him calling me now. Right, he's insulting me, by the way. Um, so, so basically, that's what I had to do, yeah. We love each other, he's like my son. I was gonna say that, so obviously you're, you're acting as a, as a father figure to him as well. Yeah, listen, did your dad ever hit you? Uh, no, he didn't. He didn't? No, he didn't, why, honestly. Why, didn't. why not? Well, I don't know, you'd have to ask him. He's been a really good boy. No, I wasn't, to be honest. I was, uh, well, you know. You know what, considering he didn't hit you, yeah, uh, uh, you've turned out really well, remarkably well. Thank you very much. But you can ask him, if you ever meet my dad, you can ask him why he never hit me. Maybe I deserve one, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, listen, people are different. But from my upbringing, I got hit a lot, yeah. And you know what? He shaped me, shaped me, you know, he shaped me to who I am today, disciplined individual, yeah, disciplined human being. And I've done the same to my son. When I say he wasn't abusing me, if I did wrong, yeah, um, he would put his hands up. In fact, it wasn't his hands. It was a cane. It's widespread right through the black community. It's a known fact. Years ago, the English used to do it as well. You would get flogged at school if you did something wrong. The headmaster would flog you. It's an old English system anyway. And I believe the English probably introduced it in Africa because Nigeria is one of English colonies, ex-English colonies.
colonies. So therefore, it's what they implemented years ago. Now, the government are saying it's wrong to do that. So if the parent don't discipline this child, so the child doesn't know when the child's doing wrong or right, the policeman in the street is not allowed to put their hands on these rascals. Who's going to do it? The school teacher is not allowed. The policeman is not allowed. The parents is not allowed. So who's going to correct these kids when they're doing wrong? That's why they're running riot, stabbing each other, shooting each other to a certain extent. Yeah, because those things have been lost. Those basic fundamentals that one needs in life have been lost. We need to put them back in fast. Do you worry about where Derek would be if boxing wasn't in his life? I, it's a cliche that, oh, if boxing saved my life or boxing, uh, no. Derek Chisora is, a, like I said to you earlier on, there's a genius living in there somewhere. Derek likes to trade. He's a trader, commodity broker, right? Which I'm sure he'll put his hands. Yes, I'm talking. I talk for England, Nigeria, Jamaica. Yeah. So basically, if he didn't do boxing, yes, he would do something else and he'll be successful at it. Um, all right. I'm going to try and wrap this up. Um, Don, can you just give us some comment on Ali Adams' situation, please? As I stand here, I'm embarrassed for him. I'm disappointed deeply because that man is probably one of the nicest human beings I've ever met in my life, Ali Adams. Yeah? I really, really feel sorry for him because... I don't know. You have to ask him, why did he do it? That's the question. He d I was training the guy. I gave him a three-fight deal. I said, give me the reasons why I should train you after three fights. He won two. And when it really mattered, he failed miserably. Yeah? Against Audley. Why did he have to take drug? Just to tell other drug users, it doesn't make you win. Yeah, it doesn't make you win. The guy that supposedly beat Amir Khan was on drugs. Uh, Peterson, I believe. You know, it's, it's, it's widespread, obviously. It's coming out now that people are using substances. You asked me about Ali Adams. I'm disappointed in him as a person because he's a really nice person. But he should never have done that. He doesn't need to do that. I certainly had no idea he, he was doing that or he did that. So when I was told... Um, I was, it took the wind out of me, it really did. And um, if, it's, if it turns out that it's, it's definite that he has done that, then he should be um, severely punished. Oh, I, and may, I, may I add, there's a lot of emphasis put on people taking drugs, which there should be. What about also the people who are administering these drugs? They should also be found and some kind of penalty to stop them giving this drugs to people. Okay. All right, Don, I could talk to you all day, but you've got things to do. And uh, so... Listen, it's always a pleasure talking to you, Kogan. You're the man. I know, and thank you very much, David. joking. All right, Don, listen, we'll see you this week anyway, probably at the press conference, the final press conference for David A. and David Chisora, so we'll see you then. Uh, definitely, but God willing. Kogan Cassius with Don Charles for iFilm London. Thank you very much.